Okay, this is inside the um, yurt-like structure. So I'll try and describe it. It's um, 20 foot, six meters uh, internal diameter. Uh, it's constructed using canvas that's come from uh, ex marquee used plywood which is uh, sourced from the local builders merchants but it's uh, fsc approved it's got the sticker on it uh, insulation six inches in the floor and the walls all um polystyrene insulation that's come uh, it's on its third at least third use i got it as a seconds thing for free from seconds and co in prestine 10 years ago and it's done a roundhouse floor and a van floor since then now i've milled it up and it's under the floor and in the walls of this and then on the bottom of the floor and the lower parts of the walls and on the roof is heavy duty pvc fabric which i've got um, from Lowe's of dundee clearance uh, that's uh, the basics of it all the plywood inside it is um, that you can't see any of this obviously it's inside the panels is um, all uh, varnished uh, and sealed the um, more featured pieces of wood are Douglas fir that was grown and milled recent uh, locally milled recently um, this table is an off cut no it's not an off cut it's the template for the central panel so the floor is constructed starting with a octagon um, so that's canvas then plywood then polystyrene insulation then vinyl uh, underneath and then there's eight of these shapes that come out from the outside of that some of these are looking a tiny bit quite a bit scuffed actually a couple of three of them two of them one of them is really quite bad because I dropped three of them onto the A470 at 50 miles an hour um, a few weeks ago when I was um, ill-advisedly loading my trailer and taking it all at once. Anyway, so that's them. And then the 16 of these sections were constructed the same way um, around the outside. And then wall sections, they're more like pouches that the uh, insulation is into with the plywood uh, bonded onto the outside inside so in that respect all of the hard uh, features like the plywood mainly is on the inside and then it becomes soft on the outside so you've got your polystyrene then uh, fam uh, heavy canvas and vinyls on the roof on the outside is vinyl the roof insulation is also from seconds and co but it's uh, 100 mil thick rather than 150. Uh, and it's double foil backed slot together stuff. So that worked quite well. Um, there is going to, so all, in between all of the panels th th where they butt up, there is a Velcro joint of 50 mil Velcro. And then all the panels that butt up also have a flap on the outside that pulls them tight together. And also velcros up with 50 mil velcro and they form the flashings that keep the weather out they're easy on the verticals of the wall because they're not very long and they're sheltered and they're vertical on the roof it's a slightly more uh, what would you call it chance in your arm type system i mean this is the first one i mean i'm sure that this can be improved on with uh somebody who's more au fait and up to date with modern techniques and stuff Basically, the two sections pull to, you know, I won't undo it all. I won't undo it all actually because of it's all under tension. Then. But anyway, so they pull over, go on like that. They've got these um, bits of curl that I've sewn on the edge. And what I'm hoping is going to happen there is, especially up here, where it work, it's working well, is I'm just hoping that that will help the weather push it down onto the roof rather than flap it up from the roof. Anyway, it's what I thought. This one's showing it really good, you see. There how, there it is under there, the Velcro. Close that up, and then it kind of pulls that. Where I've got them really good, pulls it down onto the surface. So I think that's really good. I think it would take a hell of a wind to get that to start flapping. And so there's a really good chance that the water will hit it, run down, 
four straight. This is quite a steep roof. So we stand a good chance. The steeper your roof, the better it is. Well, for shedding water anyway. I'm hoping that it'll be steep enough to shed squirrels. Anyway, I'm trying to be, be succinct in this. So this is the outside walls and what it looks like underneath. So you've got your heavy duty canvas, which can breathe. Um, these are for, if you were to set it up on a meadow or something like that, you could take them into pegs in the ground, which I can't imagine this blowing away. It weighs quite a lot. Um, anyway, I have lots of things happen that I don't imagine. Uh, so there you go. That's what it looks like up there. So everywhere, everything that touches the ground or the sky, we live in Wales. Um, this is commissioned for somebody who's going to live in Wales and wants to for the next 20 years in this. Everything that touches the ground or the sky is this heavy duty vinyl and it's all sewn with bonded, bonded nylon. The polycotton, no, the canvas is all sewn with polycotton uh, thread. Mostly sewn with polycotton thread. So there we go. That's that. Uh, all these panels locate when you when you put this up, there's a scaffold that you put up in here. And then the panels individually locate with a bolt up in the roof. Um, and that allows a little bit of uh, movement, a tiny bit, to allow evening of indiscrepancies. So, yeah. The band of this is the retaining strip that uh, stops the, the roof from sliding off the walls. Um, in uh, conventional roofing, that would be a bird's mouth or a gob cut. There we are. There's four that need to go in later when um, when this has been uh, tuned in a little bit more. So, uh, skylight. Uh, not rectangular. I was going to simplify everything for the sake of the budget, but decided not to bother. So, that's um, the Douglas fir again. And this will be an opening skylight, a hot top hinged opening skylight. Um, this is a little bit of wany edge that is the lintel, but I decided it would be quite nice to have that there. And then you can stand, well, actually, these are two separate panels. So, yes, so there's one of the main features of this is that apart from the doorway and the roof panel there, all the other panels are interchangeable. So you can... Um, Panels, of, these are going to have French windows, mini French windows. This one is going to have a stove place. And this one's going to have another French mini window. This is a skylight. There's going to be another skylight. They can all be aligned in wherever you want, depending on your environment. If you've got a tree over here, you don't necessarily want a skylight right under it. If you've got um, your stove over here, you might want that in a particular place to, to do with uh, the draft or to, um, I don't know. So they can all be moved. So you could have, say, your two French windows next to each other with the two skylights above them. Or you could have them opposite sides. You could have particularly uh, one of the skylights you could have over your kitchen so that uh, any of that condensation and also just nice environment to cook in. Because when you stand in the skylight, at this point, I'm just becoming outside. And now I am outside and I can kind of... I'm. <laughs> Well, I'm less than six foot and I'm just relaxing now. If I stand on tiptoes, I, I mean, Sarah's smaller, so she won't quite get that. But, yeah, no, never mind. Um, on the outside, I've already shown you the outside. This will be a raised skylight. So when you get to about here, you start to be as if you're outside. and You can lean on the frame. Even if you're short, you can lean on the frame. And you can put your cup of tea on the shelf here. Mantelpiece, sorry. So it's a bit like a mantelpiece. And the other one's a bit got one as well. And to be honest, for the sake of it, of it, I think I will install one when I make the uh, the panel. This panel is going to be for to have a stove. This wall panel will have a stove set in front of it. So that wall panel isn't going to be that different, to be honest, because it'll be the uh, double insulated, etc., etc., as flue that goes through it. But it'll be slightly different, um, and it'll have some fireboard on the inside of it. So. The doorway is going to be um, ply sandwiching insulation in, with a arched double door cut into it. Loads of reasons for that. Um, and one of the new reasons that I hadn't realised till I put this up 
but uh, that will be like that and then either side of it where i was going to have fairly conventional windows i'm also going to have comply but it's going to have a circular window cut into it this is my today's thinking um, with an opening circular vertical skylight in there a uh, window um, and same on the other side and the reason for that is so that the stresses that need to pass through this whole part of the earth which is quite a significant area that's 12 foot um, can be passing through several sheets of plywood and rather than through um, bits of uh, 4b1 or 2b1 or 3b1 or anything so that it's not based on the joinery really so that the strength is in the sheets of plywood and loads of screws because you know I'm quite like wood but I'm not brilliant at proper jointing and I haven't got the equipment and it would take me ages to do that and so rather than having fancy joints that aren't done very well falling apart I'd already started to see it as a shape and as a visualization but I hadn't quite realized how important it was that I continue with this ply theme from the stresses point of view of it so that's what I'll be doing and I think it's going to look absolutely fantastic because uh, the doors will open inwards and they will have a curved top there'll be two of them and the windows will be circular. Oh, sorry. Circular there. But then they'll be hinged slightly off centre and they'll open like that. And I know this, oh, somebody's ringing me up. How inconvenient. Um, I'll try and go away from it. It won't last very long. My phone switches off really fast. Anyway, so that's what I'm hoping will happen. This is the entrance and this is what it's like outside the workshop. We're in mid Wales. It's an absolutely glorious day and it's warm. Oh God. Anyway, a lot of my materials have been locally sourced from the builders merchants. This is just there. They're really fantastic. The other day I was in there and I was just checking my bank account to see how much I had and I hadn't got quite enough by about two pounds for what the bill was going to be. And so rather than taking my two pounds in cash and da da da, he just readjusted the bill to make it about seven pounds less. So I still had a fiver left. So there we are, what a nice man. And this is my unit where I'm building the thing. So from this is the best view you can get of the yurt from the inside. Um, and there it is. So uh, this, I only put this on last night, just this uh, bit of, uh, just to continue the band round until I get the uh, door frames and the window frames installed. Once they're installed, they will take all that stress quite happily because of the way I'm going to do it. So there we are, one 20 foot wide internal, then six inch walls, and then roughly a foot eaves. So you could say it's actually going to be <laughs> 23 foot wide outside. Um, I think it's going to be really warm and it feels really good in there. The, there is a lot of um, beautiful numbers that have gone into these panels, especially in the floor. I made them all in the woods and all sorts of synchronicities and um, helpful mistakes, basically. And I'll talk about, I have talked about them on other videos, but I'll talk about them again sometime. Anyway, thank you very much to whoever's listening to this and interested. It's uh, been getting, taken a long time to get this stage. And there is a lot more to do before it can really be considered a working thing. But I'm hopefully I'll get to the stage of somebody moving into it within the next month. Good luck to everybody.